Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, we're very happy to have the last uh, gravity seminar of uh, this semester today. And today the speaker will be Rami Brustin from uh, Ben Gurion University, who will tell us about sourcing the curve geometry. So please, Rami. Hello, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Shahar, for the invitation and for the wonderful initiative of uh, having this seminar and I'm happy to support it. Um, yeah, you're welcome to ask questions during the talk. And if there is, if you don't hear me or there's some problem in seeing stuff, let me know. Uh, okay, so we know that the, the care geometry describes reasonably well the exterior geometry of a large astrophysical black holes. We expect that. We are, we are experiments to test this idea and eventually we will. Um, but uh, when I talk to students and I tell them that uh, the care solution is represents a rotating black hole and it's a vacuum solution, the immediate question is, what is it that is rotating? Uh, and in Schwarzschild geometry, we're already sort of used to uh, ignoring this question, where is the matter? But when we talk about rotation, it's, uh, it's, a, it's more pressing. It's a more pressing question. And so let me show you a little video about this issue, about what is sourcing the, the care geometry by Roy Kerr. So just listen for a while. Giant supermassive black hole with accretion disks. That was the key. Anyway, so the metric can be put in this form. Now, Ray Sachs and I thought, one morning at the University of Texas, Ray and I got together and we said, look, we're both geniuses, ha-ha. So Ray may have been. We, 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 we're going to find an interior solution to Kerr. It's what I was talking about before. We were going to find a real body to put inside the inner horizon. Now, it couldn't. It had to be inside. It couldn't be at the surface of the horizon because everything's moving at the speed of light there, as it were. So it had to be inside. Say, so, uh, uh, some of this. So the first thing we did was we remembered this paper of uh, Achilles paper picture and we constructed this metric, the boyle Lindquist form, and then we thought, well, now let's find an interior solution to that. We thought about it for at least 10 minutes. And then we realized that, it, that we didn't have a clue what to do at this point, not a clue. And we said to ourselves that if we thought about this for 60 years, we still wouldn't have an interior solution. So we went off for morning coffee and forgot the whole deal. Actually, it's almost 60 years now since, and there still isn't an interior solution. So we were right. Okay. So, okay, so now it actually, this was in 2021. It's a wonderful little piece of history. And uh, now it's actually 60 years. And what I would like to do in this talk is solve this problem. So suggest an actual body that sources the care geometry. Uh, but instead of just jumping and, and telling you what it is, I want to introduce the way of thought that led to this solution. Okay. So the this is related to um, the 
idea of how to resolve black hole singularities because if you want a source of the care geometry it cannot be singular and uh, we know that there are theorems that says that it's hard to find matter that resists uh, its own uh, gravitational uh, pull and the idea that we arrived at is that in order to actually have this type of uh, matter it needs to be on horizon scale. And typically this is uh, related to some quantum effects, but it can also be mimicked by a horizon scale modification to the geometry. And this is what I will describe today. Um, as an introduction, why is it not? Okay, and then just, uh, I, I'm not going to dwell on this, but uh, we, in this case, if there is an actual, modif if there is a modification of uh, uh, the geometry on horizon scale, it has some observable consequences. But I will not uh, talk about it today until, unless asked specifically. Okay, so let's go, let's continue. And let me describe how I envision a singularity resolution by maximal entropy on horizon scales. Again, this is by way of introduction to the actual subject of the talk. And this is related to a, an idea that we proposed uh, several years ago with Joy Medved. And the idea is that we should view the black hole as the actual black hole as a bound state of highly excited string, if you wish a neutral fastball or a string star. And the reason in this case that the string star doesn't collapse, I mean, strings do respond to, gravi to gravity, but the reason that it, uh, this uh, string state doesn't collapse is because of entropy. And the entropy of the string is proportional to its length. The, if you think about a free string, um, you can view a long string as a random walk in target space. And the size of the string ball in target space is the square root. Can you see? Can you see the pointer? Yes, we can. Okay. So this, so it's the square root of the length. And now, so in order to become smaller to collapse, the it needs to cut itself. But if it cuts itself, then the its entropy decreases exponentially. So in, in this case, the entropy overcomes the gravitational uh, attraction. And you can, if the strings are interacting, you can get to the point where instead of having R as a square root of L, you have a R as a, some fractional power, and you can also have an, an area entropy. But the, the main point is that the entropy acts as a quantum pressure that prevents collapse. And so- Rami, okay. sorry. So yes. the D in the former slide <clears throat> is the spatial dimension? Here, yes. Okay. This is the special dimension. Again, I'm okay. I'm happy to answer questions here, but the, the point is that I want to make is just the idea that this type of entropy can act as a quantum pressure. And if you look, for example, you see, this is actually a neutron star of 1.4 solar masses, solar mass, and this is a black hole of 1.4 solar, solar mass drawn to scale. So they're not that different from each other. 
And the idea is that right after the quantum pressure, the Fermi pressure of a neutron star uh, cannot uh, counteract the gravitational uh, attraction, there is some other universal quantum pressure that prevents uh, stuff from collapsing. Now, this uh, can be mimicked, as I said, with a, a geometry. And the key property of a, the, the geometry or the energy momentum tensor that sources the geometry is that it has maximal negative pressure instead of maximal entropy. And, and you can see this here. Uh, let me move to, to yes, yeah, so now it's right. You can see the pointer, right? Can you see the pointer? Yes. Okay. So you see, this is a simple geometry that realized the same idea that I had, that we had before. This is supposed to to represent the interior of a Schwarzschild black hole, the energy momentum tensor that corresponds to this geometry, the solution of Einstein equation, is radial pressure equals minus energy density and transverse pressures vanish. This epsilon is a parameter that when it goes to zero, essentially, you get a real horizon and it's supposed to be extremely small. The compactness of this object is arbitrarily close to that of a black hole. And the main feature or the main property of this geometry is that each sphere in this case, so each radial surface, each fixed radial surface is a, almost a horizon. I mean, if epsilon square were zero, it would be a horizon. Gravity is still weakly coupled, curvature is the small, except in the region here near the center. And you get a regular quantum geometry, classical geometry. Uh, it needs smoothing at the surface and at the core, which uh, we did with the Marcin form. And um, this object looks exactly like a black hole from the outside. So yeah, it's as good as a source for the Schwarzschild geometry as the vacuum uh, geometry, and it's regular, doesn't have a singularity. OK, so the, and the, the reason that this object can overcome singularity theorems is because of this maximal negative pressure. The way to see it is here in, in, in its wonderful book that bound, and you can see explicitly that this geometry overcomes or overwrites the book that bound uh, by having this uh, negative, maximal negative radial pressure. And we are now actually uh, with Agar, Agar Meir, a student, we are trying to show that this is, that having this negative pressure over horizon scale is actually a sufficient condition for overcoming, for evading the singularity theorem. So the, Pen, the Penrod singularity theorem, the Penrod Hawking singularity theorem. Okay, so. Now, it turns out that this type of energy momentum test or P radial equals minus rho and P transverse equal to zero is actually can be viewed as a collection of rigid strings um, or a collection of electric flux tubes. And this arises in the context of string theory in the case of tachyon condensation, endpoint of tachyon condensation. I'm not going to, to get into that, but 
the picture in this case is that this geometry that I described is sourced by a collection of rigid strings. And you can see here that you need, there is a source at the center that's, and, and you need to here may smooth it as it goes to the vacuum. And this is something that we're finishing now with Joe Medved. And so to, sum, to summarize, in this case, we can have a collection of radial rigid strings that are essentially uh, that are sourcing the Schwarzschild geometry. Each sphere is almost a horizon, and it's a, it's a stable uh, geometry. I haven't shown that, but uh, you can look at the paper. And it's sourced by so-called string fluid, this collection of uh, electric flux tubes. And let me, because I'm going, this is ending the end of the introduction. Let me pose for questions if there are any. No, if not, let me continue. So now I'm going to the main subject of my talk, the um, essentially the rotating frozen star, which is the source of the care geometry. And let me remind you about the care geometry because uh, I'm not sure that you re remember all the details about it. Um, so this is the care geometry in the boyer linquist in coordinates. You see here that it rotates. That's the dt phi, gt phi suggests that the geometry rotates. This is standard expression. Delta is uh, this quantity here, which whose vanishing is corresponds to the position of the outer horizon. There is also an inner horizon, but we will not have that. And a sigma is a, this quantity r squared plus a squared plus n squared theta sometimes. It's called rho square, but I'm using sigma. Um, a, this parameter A, is the angular momentum divided by the mass. It has a range between zero and one. Zero corresponds to the Schwarzschild. Uh, delta equals zero is the, marks the position of the horizon. And this is an important uh, ordinate which we will use uh, later on. It's um, essentially the analog of the radial coordinates in Schwarzschild. It's the aerial coordinate in care, which is interesting because you see that at r equals zero, r squared is still non-vanishing. And the area of the horizon is given by four pi r plus squared, where plus means this quantity, okay? So what and what I would like to do is essentially repeat the steps that that we used before uh, to source the Schwarzschild geometry in the case of the care geometry. So we are looking for a geometry, in interior geometry where each radial surface is almost a horizon, gravity is weak, and it's regular, okay? And the way to do it is we need first to represent the, the care geometry in a nice way, and then it will be clear what needs to be done. So. Uh, Rami, when yes. you say gravity is weakly coupled, uh, do you mean that the curvatures are small or? Yes, that the curvatures are small, the, yes. Okay, thanks. Yes. Uh, we'll, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so you see now the first step is to 
to uh, write. So what we need to do is we need the to get to a point where GTT and GRR are the inverse of each other so that it looks like more like a static geometry because then we know what to do. So the way we do it is we use, again, it's the same care geometry, just represented differently. And we notice that it can represent can be represented like that. You see, it's like in this case, if you do phi goes to phi minus little omega t, you get this form of a metric. And n square is delta over sigma. I remember delta over sigma. And omega is d phi t over g phi t. Okay, so now we are almost there, right? Because you see there is an n square here and one over n square here. And the way to proceed in this case is go to a, a rotating frame, this uh, explained in this paper. And in this case, you see omega h is the angular velocity of the horizon. It's uniform across, across the horizon. And so it's a over 2mr plus, and it's g phi t over g phi phi at the horizon. And in this case, the, the metric transforms into this form, okay? Now, now we go to the near horizon geometry. So we set delta equal to zero everywhere where uh, to leading order. In this case, we can also use 2MR, replace 2MR by R squared plus A squared. And we let omega go to omega H because that's, you see, that's a, there, that's a so-called zero angular momentum or locally non-rotating frame observer which co-rotates with the horizon angular velocity. And then you see that omega h minus omega is, is zero. This cross term disappears. And we just we are just left with this metric. So you see that in this case, GRR and GTT are actually the inverse of each other. This is still here. I haven't done anything. Okay, so now we go to um, we we see when you do that, if we replace delta over sigma by epsilon square, as we did in the Schwarzschild case, we get a very simple geometry that is similar to the static case, except that the two dimensional uh, fixed radial coordinate surfaces have the geometry of the care horizon here. And the proposal is that this is geometry everywhere in the interior of the care uh, of the black hole. This in the same way that, uh, that we needed before smoothing at the surface and at the core. Uh, it needs smoothing, and this is work in progress that Tamar is working on, Tamar Simpson. Okay, so. Ami, can you remind yeah. me what is sigma? What's that? Can you remind me what sigma is? Yes, so sigma is, uh, where is it? It's, Here it is. Great. This one. So it's sometimes called rho. But uh, so for theta equals uh, pi over two, it, it goes like r squared. Yes. So can you sorry, can you go back to your slide again? 
So is there uh, something bad happening at r equals zero for your angular? Yes, yeah, I, I, yes. So it's not something bad. This is the smoothing in at the surface and at the core <clears throat> that needs to be done. It's the same issue that we had in the in the static case, but the, so and I will I will show you. There is also some other interesting stuff going on. So, and you're you're saying that the geometry is not sigma. It's not one over sigma. It's going to be something else. You need in the at the core. It needs to be changed uh, in such a way that it goes to a finite finite reasonably small value. And for the static case, we did it, uh, and it's clear that it can be done also for the for the rotating case. In fact, in the rotating case, it's a, a milder problem because it only happens at the, on the equator. Okay, but uh, fine. But uh, fine. But then the geometry is not quite. It's not what you wrote. It's a modification. Yes. Yes. So you see in this picture this uh, little area here in the core. Yeah. But the modification is uh, is mild. The actual amount of matter in this region is very small. Okay. And so it's uh, it's really a, a mild singularity. And in the case uh, that I described with the electric flux, it just corresponds to having a source there. Okay. So so this. I don't view this as a as a problem because we resolved it in the static case, and it's clear that in similar techniques can be used to resolve it in the in the rotating case. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Rabbi, can I ask yeah. another question about sure. so the epsilon that you're that you're using now? So yes. I'm just trying to understand the philosophy now. Should I think about this as a constant parameter? Yes, a function it is. Of the coordinates it is a, or? Yes, it is a constant parameter. Okay, and uh, I see. And that's why when you connect this geometry to care, there is a, a surface region where there's something. There's a jump in a, in a derivative or something. Yeah, yes, but. Formally, there is a jump. You can use the either a junction condition to to verify that everything works, and or you can actually smooth it, basically showing that the this uh, flex lines uh, smoothly end. So that that's what happens there. I mean, if you if you would choose it to be. Like a function and not a constant, maybe. No, <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, okay. We tried it. Okay. Uh, it has to be a constant. Uh, okay. And the reason that it has to be, that it has to be a constant, this the the geometry is actually, if you think about it, is quite complicated, and and it's a semi miracle that things work out. So simply, where an epsilon square is a constant, if it becomes a function, all hell breaks loose. And and you see in this case, this is an actual solution of the Einstein equations with p radial equals minus rho, and the actual function of the energy density and the pressure is more complicated. I mean significantly more complicated than in the static case. Of course, when A goes to zero, it reduces to the static case. That's why, for example, we know that uh, smoothing the core and the surface shouldn't be that much of a problem. In addition to GTT and GRR, there's the other components of the energy momentum tensor. Um, vanish to order epsilon square, so p is zero. And gr theta is non-vanishing, but if you um, 
diagonalize the energy momentum tensor, uh, you see that all these quantities are only changed up to order epsilon squared. Okay, good. Rami, yep. So this is in, in the interior now? Yes. So this is the, I claim, the matter that sources the care geometry. Okay. And, and what and I would like to show now is that it has the correct mass and correct angular momentum. Correct for what? For care with the with the same parameters. The exterior of this geometry is care with parameter M and parameter A, which represent the angular momentum and mass yes. as measured from infinity. Yes. And I would like to show that these are actually the mass and angular momentum of that matter that that is inside, that is in sourcing the curve geometry. Why isn't it clear? I mean, what you're doing, you got the right-hand side of these equations by plugging in your ansatz into uh, the Einstein equations, right? That's true, but you see here that the parameter A that appears here as, first of all, we don't know what the what the mass is in this case. No, no but I mean, you're sourcing the curve geometry with some matter that has parameters A and, uh, and uh, R. R. Yes. And now what you're saying is that you're guaranteed that when you glue the interior with the exterior, you, it will work. So what is there to check? <laughs> so let me show you. <laughs> you are much less uh, strict than I was. OK. So now. Mass, as we know in GR, in general relativity, is a quantity that you measure at infinity. But here we would like to show it's it's a kind of a star, and we would like to show that the mass, that essentially is the integral of the energy density, is related to the mass that you observe at infinity. And the way to do it, you have to um, essentially use um, a local definition of the mass. And that local definition was invented by a Bardeen, Carter, and Hawking. And then afterwards, in the context of isolated horizons and then dynamical horizons by Ashtakar and Krishnan. And the idea is that you, um, you show that the mass as measured at infinity is related to the integral of the energy density, essentially. Now, in the case of a black hole, you have a, a boundary, the horizon. And so you have to add that, but you have to add that. But if you have a star, like we do, you don't, you ignore this contribution from the boundary and you get that this is just the mass. And so in this case, we need to check what is the relationship between the mass of the black hole and the uh, integral of the energy density. And this is the integral of the energy density. Uh, we, to facilitate the calculation, we use unit in which uh, r plus square is equal to one, and then we restore the units at the end. and and it's actually a very interesting calculation, which I mean, you need to integrate this quantity, which looks extremely complicated. And surprise, this integral is just one, despite the complication. And the, the way that this r square is coming. This is one power of r square, and then the the square root of g from here gives you another power of r square. You just integrate this complicated uh, integral, and you get one. 
And when you restore the unit, you find that M0, which is the integral over the uh, energy density, is a half R plus. Uh, the reason for me calling it M0 is will now be clarified. So it turns out that the, the, in the, for a rotating black hole, there is a quantity that is the analog of a rest mass. This was uh, discovered by Christodoulou in the 70s a, as in response to the calculation of Penrose showing that you can extract angular momentum and energy from a rotating black hole. And it turned out that there's a limit to that extraction. And that limit is called the irreducible mass. And it's basically the rest mass of a black hole or the minimal amount of mass that a rotating black hole can have after all the angular momentum that could be extracted using the Penrose process was extracted. Okay, and now you see that in this case, there is a quadratic equation relation between the irreducible mass and the actual mass. It's like a relativistic formula, m squared plus p squared, something like that. And we can turn this into a, a, a quadratic equation for m irreducible square in terms of m square. We find that this is the answer. And you can compare it to <clears throat> the value of the area of the horizon, a quarter of a over four pi, just write one quarter r plus, and you see that this is the same expression. So m irreducible, the square root of that, is a half square root of a over four pi, which is equal to a half r plus, capital R plus. So what we found is that the mass of the source that we, the source that is sourcing the curved geometry is the irreducible mass of the curved black hole. Okay. Good. Questions? No. Okay. So now we move to the angular momentum. So the angular momentum we can calculate in the same way, except that now instead of having putting here the time like killing vector, we need to put the angular killing vector, the defy, and the expression in this case is that the GTT, the previously used GTT is replaced by GT phi. Now, the thing is that in our case, we use the sum of zero angular momentum observer. And for this observer, space time doesn't rotate. So we need to go to a different set of observers and the way to do it is to go to an observer that rotates rigidly with the angular velocity of the horizon, because that's how we arrived at the ZAMO uh, observer. And so in this case, what we do is we, we go back to the original rotating observer, and we find that the metric is this one here. See, so in this case, we do have a, a T phi component of the metric in showing that it rotates and it rotates at the angular velocity of the horizon, which in these units you remember that we're using is simply omega h equals a. So now we can uh, calculate 
the angular momentum using this the formula the, the local formula and in this case it turns out that when we calculate gt5 it comes out to be a gtt gtt remains the same it's t up t down and <clears throat> so we find that the angular momentum of the source of the care geometry is actually eight times the irreducible mass. Okay. So we find by this calculation that A is actually the ratio of angular momentum to mass, the same ratio as in the exterior care geometry. And then the to get from the irreducible mass to the full mass as viewed at infinity, we need this is again standard in a, in care. We need to use the first law, integrate the first law. This is taken from the paper of Christodoulou and. You see here, we replace A by J over M and integrate over J. And when we do that, we find the same relationship between M square and M irreducible square. It's basically adding the rotational energy <coughs> to the rest mass of the black hole. And you need to add it quadratically. This is the same as you do in care. And so we find that the mass and angular momentum of the rotating frozen star, the source that we propose to for sourcing the care geometry, are actually equal to those of care. So I think almost that you see that uh, this is a, a non trivial calculation. Okay, so. Um, okay, let, so let me pause here for questions. If there are any, if not, I will uh, go on to discuss the symmetries. Okay, so we continue. Now, what I would like to show here is the, discuss the um, trajectories of objects inside the 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 would be horizon and again this is similar to what happens in the rotating case so first of all you see I write here the equation um basically d s square equals the tau square equals either zero or one for Time like or null trajectories. And this is the essentially the energy per unit mass of the <clears throat> energy per unit momentum. And you see in this case that uh, the trajectories are essentially radial in the limit epsilon square goes to zero. And they are null radial. And this is actually also similar to what happens in the in static case. Remember that these are, this is a ZAMO observer. So if you want to see how the trajectory looks from infinity, you need to add the rotation, rigid rotation <laughs> at the horizon angular velocity. Um, okay, so basically the <clears throat> trajectories go along these uh, radial rigid strings. Now, as you know, one of the interesting features of the care geometry is that it has a killing tensor in addition to the time-like and angular killing vectors. 
And what we would like to show here is that this killing tensor actually exists uh, for the interior geometry. And the way to do that is just follow the um, proof that the uh, of the existence of the killing tensor in the case of um, care. And the first thing is to identify the sort of principal null vectors, which in our case are given by these two, it's LA and NA, see? They're normalized, they're null vectors and they're normalized such that their product, we normalize them such that their product is minus two. And then we need to show that the killing uh, identity is actually vanishing. Here in the proof, there are some subtleties. If you apply it in, in, in a straightforward way, you find uh, that this is order epsilon square and you need to verify that also the invariant quantities are actually vanishing in the limit epsilon square, which we show in the in the, <clears throat> in the paper. So we have a killing tensor here. And it's interesting that the Carter constant is actually vanishing, identically vanishing for null radius trajectory. You remember that the trajectories in the interior are essentially Null radial and for these null radial trajectories, the Carter constant actually vanishes. So it is constant and it vanishes. Okay, so we continue. And um, now another property that is related to the existence of the killing tensor. Uh, sorry, Rami, the, the, the trajectories that you're talking about are also equatorial? Is they're, they're, in this case, they're, it's, yes, it's, uh, they, they're, you see, it's, it doesn't matter. The epsilon square kills, and uh, it's true for any angular. Mm -hmm. um, I see. The reason, this is actually, Shahab, if you look at the Schwarzschild solution or the Kerr solution and you ask, what are the trajectories that, that can enter the horizon or, uh, you know, or exit from a region near the horizon, you find that they must be radial, radial and none. Mm -hmm. The reason is that the redshift is going to infinity. And so you get a similar expression in fact Samir Matur um, use this uh, um, use this property which is a property of the care in, in Schwarzschild geometry uh, to argue about the nature of the Hawking radiation and you see here that is simply extended <clears throat> throughout throughout the interior. And because epsilon square is very small, the redshift is extremely large. So basically from a point of view of a external observer, stuff that falls in to this, on this object essentially is stuck to the surface. Okay, so it rotates at the angular velocity of the horizon and it gets stuck at the surface. Did I answer my, your question? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Very well. So, yes. So, um, so the symmetries of this object are the same symmetries as care. This is important later on for um, studying perturbations because uh, this means that the perturbation equation 
separate, which is a highly you know, trivial um, property. Okay, good. So, um, and and then another property that is related to the existence of the Carter constant is the fact that the Hamilton-Jacobi equations separate. And you see here explicitly the separation. Um, again, showing that uh, the, uh, the symmetries of this object are the same symmetries of K. Okay. Um, any question before I move on to the next subject? No, okay. Good, so now uh, this is related to what Amos was asking. In fact, there is an issue which might have, should have caught your attention which is um, happening also away from r equals zero. You see this term here, r squared minus three squared cosine squared theta. This is, this can change sign. Okay, which means that the energy uh, can change sign from positive to negative the energy density, which is not that uh, that bad, but it's just an interesting property. And the reason why we have this is because the the Einstein tensor is determined essentially by the two D part only this. This doesn't contribute. And it's well known that the curvature, the Gaussian curvature near the horizon of care can become negative. So in fact, the the I'm sorry, the picture of care as an ellipse is very far from the actual geometric picture. It, there, there is a region near the rotation axis that ha, where the curvature is negative for large enough value of A. Okay, and, and so this is a picture of the contours of the energy density it goes to, it's very small, it goes becomes larger here on the equator. This is what Amos was asking about. And here for A equals square root of three over two, a, the negative energy region reaches all the way to the outer horizon. I, I didn't mention it, but this object doesn't have the the sourcing geometry, the sourcing matter doesn't have an inner horizon or any inner agrosphere. These are good. Now, so the energy is negative, but the null energy condition, in fact, the radial null energy condition is actually satisfied. So there are no issues with um, um, uh, causality or it's, it's not a real problem. It's it's an interesting observation which uh, I would like to understand better. And partially, if we think about it as a, if we think about this geometry as sourced by the string fluid, that string fluid has electric fields and magnetic fields. And the negative energy region just means that we need to replace the magnetic field, the electric field by the magnetic field as the dominant contribution in this region, which is interesting. So it's related to the rotation 
we don't quite understand it yet. So, so Rami, about the yes. string fluid, uh, so what equations does it obey? I mean, the hydrodynamics, but what kind? Let me, I, uh, Maybe yeah. you said this already? No, uh, I haven't because I, I was skipping it. Let me, okay. let me get to it. And okay. so, but before I get to it, let me just summarize that we, <clears throat> we're able to present a source for the care geometry. That source obeys the Einstein equation, it's regular, with the exception of what I said that needs to be smooth at the core and at the surface. It is arbitrarily compact <clears throat> for any value of the rotation parameter. In fact, it's an interesting question to understand here why A cannot be uh, larger than one. And there is an interesting explanation, which I didn't discuss. It's black in the sense that stuff that goes in essentially never gets out. So based on our energy condition, there are no obvious pathologies and it reproduces the parameters of care, so it seems to be a good source for the care geometry. And let me remind you in this yeah, case. supermassive black hole with accretion disks, that was the key. Anyway, so the metric can be put in this form. Now, Ray Sachs and I thought one morning the University of Texas. Ray and I got together and we said, look, we're both geniuses, ha ha. So Ray may have been. We must, we, we, we're going to find an interior solution to curve. It's what I was talking about before. We were going to find a real body to put inside the inner horizon. Now, it couldn't, it had to be inside. It couldn't be at the surface of the horizon because Everything's moving at the speed of light there, as it were. So it had to be inside, say, uh, uh, some disk. So the first thing we did was we remembered this paper of uh, Achilles paper picture, and we constructed this metric, the Boyer Lindquist form. And then we thought, well, now let's find an interior solution to that. We thought about it for at least 10 minutes. And then we realized that, if, that we didn't have a clue what to do at this point, not a clue. And we said to ourselves that if we thought about this for 60 years, we still wouldn't have an interior solution. So we went off for morning coffee and forgot the whole deal. Actually, it's almost 60 years now since, and there still isn't an interior solution. So we were right. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so I hope that I convinced you that we did find an interior uh, body that is sourcing the care geometry. The key in this case is to understand that it need to reproduce, basically have the same geometry of the care horizon at each radial surface. And once you understand that, you can uh, construct this type of uh, solution. Now, uh, this is, Shahar, this is the answer to your question. The Lagrangian for the matter in this case is the so-called born infant. This K is like the F mu nu. It has an electric and magnetic part. And we are about to finish a paper describing this for the, um, for the static case. And you can see, if you are interested, I can show some more slides related to that from the talk that I gave in Nebuchadnezzar. Um, so, 
you just ask in, in I'll show it. Uh, but let me end here because we reached the end of time and then uh, uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Rami. Any questions? So I, I I want to also ask about about this uh, burning field, but I'll start with. So, I mean, you were discussing how in the interior geometry you also have the these extra symmetries of curve that uh, arise due to the special uh, algebraic proper, properties of a, a metric, the geometry. So, I mean, would did you try to use um, Kerr shield coordinates for this? Because somehow these are the most natural to realize this symmetry, right? No, because you see, to <coughs> really arrive at this form, we had to go the the we had to go through this um, several steps from the Boyer linguist and the Boyer linguist are the most similar to um, the Schwarzschild uh, coordinates and we knew how to do it in the Schwarzschild case otherwise it becomes extremely complicated and so and I'm not even sure how to go to pair shield from this form of the interior metric. So we didn't try. We were so happy that we were, you see, this is what eventually convinced us that there's something interesting in this uh, type of solution that this integral, which is extremely complicated, give one, and it gives the irreducible mass of the of the black hole. This was an unexpected surprise. And I think that it's very hard to get it in any other way, but we we haven't tried it. And and this the, the symmetry is actually uh, very simple because you see this uh, null principal null vectors are are ex extremely simple so it's it's really straightforward to um, perform the calculation Wait, is the issue uh creating a, an analytic solution or a solution in general? As far as I know, nobody succeeded in doing, in finding a, a source for the care geometry in okay. any way. No, but that cannot be right. I mean, in astrophysics, you have objects that are rotating and they source the care geometry. So numerically, surely you can solve it. No, it's a, in this case, the... That's true. You take an object, you rotate it, and you ask what is the geometry around it. You ask the computer. Around it, yes, but not in, in the interior. Not when it rotates. Well, you have it in the interior. You have it. You say, I have matter. I have some equation of state. This is my gap. My sun is rotating. It has an equation of state. And now I ask uh, the computer but to tell me what the solution is. Most of the matter, it, it collapses. It cannot. It cannot our sun, our sun does not collapse, and it's no, no. So okay, so for slowly rotating objects, which are not care black holes, you can. There are ways of getting the geometry in the way that you describe. That's a that's what Hartle did long time ago, but for a black hole, you cannot do that. Because of the horizon. No, but you also don't have a black hole, right? I do. You don't have a horizon. 
yes, but the this epsilon square, for example, Visser put a, a bound. This epsilon square, think about it as 10 to the minus 22. Okay, so. No, but it's important that you don't have a horizon, otherwise everything will collapse. No, no, it's the, uh, I can go to the limit epsilon goes to zero and the geometry is still finite, nothing collapses. It's just more complicated to do the calculation. But uh, that's hard to believe, I mean. <laughs> but because, this... because any standard matter will collapse in, in the interior of the black hole. I know, so the key in this case is that the, this is not standard matter. It's this uh, P equals minus rho that it's, you see in, in gravity, the actual source is, where is it? Is P plus rho, uh, where is it? This I discussed at the beginning here. You see, this, for example, is a, a precursor of the um, of the singularity theorems, and in the Richardura equation or in general, the source of gravity, relativistic gravity, is p plus rho. So, uh, in this case, you actually evade the singularity theorem or evade the, the tendency of matter to collapse by having this negative uh, maximal negative pressure. So there's some energy condition that this will uh, violate. Uh, no. that, that's essentially what you have in the Richard Dura equation. You make some assumption. It's not the no, null. No, no, it's, uh, no. The way it works is that the null energy condition if epsilon is zero, the null energy condition, or for any value of epsilon, the null energy condition is saturated, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't have it. We have we don't have a marginally trapped surface, so or we have only a marginally trapped surface, no trapped surface, and that's how you can evade the singularity theorem. So the null energy condition is saturated. No. Energy, the, it's not violated. I don't remember, okay. I don't remember the exact details, but there, there is some, uh, I don't remember if it's a strong or the weak energy condition, but there's some condition uh, that tells you for sure when uh, the thing can collapse and when it yes, won't. Yes, yes, so in this that case- That has to be violated. No, no. Otherwise it will collapse, it's a theorem. Yeah, almost, but, <laughs> but um, what I'm telling you in this case is that if P plus rho is zero, yes, and you see that the size here is to M1 plus epsilon square, yes, the conditions, I we are working on that, but in the, the simple case, of the Buchlal bound that shows that if you take normal matter, yes. it becomes unstable when for R, which is equal to M times nine eight, you yes. see we evade this theorem and null energy condition is not violated. And the way that we evade it is by having a negative, maximal negative radial pressure. So there is no issue about that. That's a fact. So basically it's the saturation of null energy condition means that geodesics are, are parallel. And so if they, don't start as focus, they will not uh, focus anymore. They will continue to be parallel and the smoothing at the core is over a small enough region so that they don't, uh, don't focus. I 
I can show you all of that. It's all in the papers and it's in extremely explicit form. Okay. Yes. So, Shahal. Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So, regard actually, so can you write down a solution of this born infield uh, hydrodynamics, which ha which shows this yes. uh, so negative I radial pressure? Right. So I have to uh, go to a different talk. Okay. Okay. Uh, stop share. Well, I don't know. I mean, if uh, if you think it's a uh, problem. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, I have it there. I just thought that it might take too long, and so I I actually have it there. Can you see it? Yes. So let me go to the part. And discuss. Where is it? Ah, here. OK, so. First of all, the you see, this is a calculation that shows <clears throat> that P radial equals minus rho is a, you can think about it as source by rigid string. So essentially the energy density here along, it's basically tension, right? Tension PR equals minus rho, P radial equals minus rho. It's like having tension like a cosmological constant in one dimension. And you can see explicitly here that M of R is proportional to R, which is exactly what we had before. Okay? Is this clear? Shaha? Uh, yeah, I'm trying. So, wait, th this is... This is still uh, in the static case. Okay. Okay. So... You just integrate, right? You just integrate m of r is four pi times the integral from zero to r over the energy density. Even if the energy density is constant, then m of r is proportional to r. And so you get two g m of r proportional to r, which is exactly what you need. Okay? I see. Okay. And these rigid strings are related to the born infield theory? Yes. They are yeah. actually they are replaced by flux tubes. Mm -hmm. Now, to get this born infield, you have to go to so called tachyon condensation in in open strings. That's uh, what discussed extensively by Sen and many others. And in this case, you get an effective action that, um, let me change this. You get an effective action that starts out as, as this one. And in the limit of tachyon condensation, this V goes to zero. And and you get uh, the Lagrangian vanishes, and so you have to go to a, the Hamiltonian uh, in terms of the conjugate of the electric field. And then in this case, you do one more transformation going from this Hamiltonian to a Lagrangian. This is all done in the literature. We didn't do it and the dual Lagrangian that you get is this minus a half K square. K is essentially the dual of F. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So so far okay? Yes. Okay, good. Now you calculate the team you knew from this Lagrangian. And the team you knew is simply 
k mu lambda, k nu lambda divided by square root. You just take a derivative with respect to g mu nu and you get t mu nu in the standard way. And, and in the simplest solution, it's only the electric field that is non-vanishing. The other, the magnetic field vanishes. And so you only get an electric field in the radial direction. And you see that in this case, you get exactly P radial equals minus rho and P transverse equals zero. Okay, and what we found recently, this is not uh, written yet, but it's, uh, it will be out soon, is that this core, the divergence at the core is essentially like an, el an electric monopole and the smoothing here can be essentially done. There's a, a surface of charge at the end of these uh, flux tubes. And this exactly conforms to the- Just normal, just normal electric charges that- you make Yes, it? yes. Okay. Well, they are, in this case, <laughs> they are electric charges after a few transformations from the original ones. But if you okay. treat this, as an electromagnetic field, and these are just, there's an electric charge here, and the, and the smeared electric charge with the op opposite electric charge here at the surface. So the whole uh, construction is neutral, and the divergence at the core that we found is just corresponds to a source, to an electric source. And the smoothing here corresponds to um, basically a, having a Israel, the, cor the correct Israel junction condition that ends this uh, flux tubes. So, th so the value of the charge at the center determines the mass of this object and its size. I see. Okay, thanks. There's a lot of, uh, I guess it's a lot of stuff to to say in a few minutes, but uh, yeah. yeah, I can read so, about it. And yeah, so this is what I told you that we discovered after this person at the Princeton PGI told us that mm -hmm. somehow related. There's a an old um, model that it's called cloud of strings that has similarities. It had P radial equals minus rho, but they didn't quite use it for a black hole solution. So. There is his, there is a history in, in, in this case. Okay, great. So any more questions or actually there were a few comments in the chat. Should I, should I read them off yes. or do you want to? Yes, please. So Ofek said that- they... Just a comment for Amos. Um, if you, mm. the, if you uh, look at the perturbation equation in this case, um, let me then let me end this and go back to. Let me end this. Go back to this of can answer. Okay, so can you see this? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes, yeah, so Amos, just to a comment about the stability is that if you actually look at the perturbation equation, for example, the Chandrasekhar type, or we did the also more sophisticated perturbation equation, the B radial plus rho equals zero also says that this object is ultra stable. They all vanish identically. So this is another property that is similar to a black hole. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a really a unique type of uh, equation of state. Yes, so can you read the chat? Okay. Uh, okay, Ofek just left for his meeting. But uh, and he said that he also discussed it with you privately. But he, he was mentioning that the exterior of the sun is not exactly curved. The multiples are different. Only okay. the leading order is the same. So yeah. about the multiples, in our case, the multiples are exactly those of care up to order epsilon square because the exterior is in care, mm -hmm. and the multiples are are measured at infinity. And so the the multiples are exactly those. Okay. 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 Uh, so we had a lot of questions. So unless there's anything uh, urgent, I think it's a good time to end and thank Rami again. Thank you. Thank you. And See I'm you next happy semester. to. Yeah, I'm happy to discuss this further if anyone is interested. Cool. Okay. Bye.